we are honored this evening to have uh, Judge Hansel here with us. Uh, Judge Hansel has been a friend of our ministry and a friend of RU, and it uh, just so happens that she's running for circuit judge, the 17th Judicial Circuit, and uh, Pastor found out about that and wanted her here to get a chance to, to, uh, to meet you. And uh, so, Al, would you come and introduce her at this time? And uh, after you introduce her, we're going to give a round of applause for her, all right? Well, I tell you, it's, it's a privilege to be uh, working in our uh, court system here in Rockford. I've been up here doing this for about 12 years now. I just met uh, Judge Hansel this uh, probably the past six months. And I've sat on several of her cases, and I don't think I've ever seen a judge that's more compassionate, has more integrity, uh, cares for people. Uh, if the law will allow, give them a chance for uh, rehabilitation. That's why I invited her tonight to one of our graduations so that she could uh, see what we do here at North Love Baptist Church. Uh, we're concerned for people. We love people in our neighborhood, our communities. Uh, we need drug rehabilitation bad here. Uh, I don't have to tell you how bad drugs are here, but uh, it's, it's such a privilege that she came tonight uh, to speak a little bit. She is running for office, by the way, uh, for circuit uh, judge of the 17th Judicial District, and uh, she would appreciate your votes. <laughs> right, Judge? Uh, All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to her and let her finish it up then. Well, thank you. It's me who really should be clapping for you. Uh, quite frankly, the work that you do here, you know, pat yourselves on the back and uh, lift up the praise because it is incredibly important. It is valuable to the community and the lives of the men and women that have the opportunity to go through the program. So the clapping really shouldn't be for me by any means. Uh, what a pleasure to be able to come here. Uh, as well as an honor when I was asked. Uh, I went, wow, I would love to do that. So just a little bit of information. Um, I was raised in a Baptist church in a small town outside of Columbia, Missouri. Uh, went to undergrad and then uh, was fortunate enough to be admitted into the University of Illinois College of Law. Uh, my first interview, uh, not my first one, but the first important interview after law school was with the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office here. At the end of the interview, the state's attorney then, Paul Logley, said, well, do you want the job? I said, I do want the job. And so I went uh, uh, from Champaign up here and uh, was there for four years, met my husband as, the, as a consequence. Uh, at, the time, uh, at the time, I was a prosecutor working in delinquency, and uh, he was a police officer for the Rocker City Police Department, and he just kept showing up for these trials. We had tag team trials, so while I was doing a trial, uh, my partner, another state's attorney, would be preparing the witnesses, and then we'd switch. Well, he kept showing up, oftentimes not for my trial, I assumed they were for hers, but no, not necessarily. He was there to check out the essay, apparently. Uh, so um, ultimately, we began dating and then um, married, and have two beautiful children, uh, one a senior in high school at Lutheran, uh, and the other a junior at Worcester Polytechnical Institute uh, outside of Boston. Um, before, after 21 years, my husband uh, had, in my car, uh, an accident. Of course it would be my car, right? Uh, and because of a variety of things, uh, a congenital issue with his neck, as well as some injuries from being on the job, was no longer able to be a police officer any longer. He really kind of wanted to avoid uh, the career that he had been in a little bit. He'd seen too much, experienced too much, and really, you know, when you're a first responder, there's so many things that you're subjected to, and he thought it would be better to walk away. So he thought about teaching, but you know how you need to think about those, respond to the taps on the shoulder. Uh, so he finally, one of his uh, good friends, took his own life, um, a combination of depression, PTSD and so forth, a fellow police officer. Uh, and he finally realized that the tap on the shoulder was a lot harder. Uh, and so he just recently got his master's in clinical mental health counseling. Uh, and uh, he works at Rosecrans in the Florian program uh, for first responders, uh, fire, EMS, uh, military, and of course, police. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing, uh, and I guess I tell you this because it tells you a little bit about maybe me also, as well as us as a couple, uh, and 
our um, thoughts on the community. So when we met, we were both seeking justice and trying to make the community a better place. And through our jobs, as we've gone through our lives, we've continued to do that with a variety of involvement in community organizations and through our church and so forth. Uh, and then now we are off kind of in the same boat again. Uh, he with the clinical mental health counseling that he does for the first responders. Uh, and I am now in the DUI court, DUI, reckless homicide. I have murders. I have a whole gamut of cases. Uh, but how I got there, uh, after I had been in the state's attorney's office, I was kind of headhunted out because I was a good litigator, a trial attorney. Uh, to do complex civil litigation, and I did that for 15 years for someone, uh, and then five years owning my own firm. And I was getting a tap on the shoulder, uh, really being drawn to maybe leave the practice, which was, you know, it was lucrative as well as flexible. You own your own business, you can kind of make your own hours. Giving up that flexibility was very big, uh, as well as, you know, a lot of other things, but at the end of the day, the reason I made the, different, the change was because as a judge, I can make a much bigger difference and much bigger ripples with what I do. Uh, and so I was called here to this position. I was led here. Uh, I resisted a little bit. I think we all maybe can uh, understand how sometimes, you, oh no, I'm pretty comfortable here. I don't really want to make that move. Uh, but ultimately, it was the right thing. I have already, and I've been a judge almost three years, I've already seen that either how I have treated the people in my courtroom or the words that I have spoken to them have made a difference. That's why I do what I do. Uh, and what, what a wonderful opportunity to have such a good program like RU at my disposal when I'm trying to make decisions. There is no question that the Illinois Department of Corrections is not going to rehabilitate pretty much anyone. Now, understand there are times that for a variety of reasons, either I don't have discretion under the way the law is written, uh, or because of a variety of circumstances, it's just something that isn't appropriate uh, to do other than uh, determine the Department of Corrections. And of course, obviously I'm there to follow the law. Um, but f for those, for those people, it's a small percentage, and then there's a small percentage of people who were probably going to be here once and done. It's just they're, very, they're barely touching the criminal justice system, uh, and it's pretty highly likely that we may never see them again. But it's the majority of those people in the middle trying to figure out exactly what to do. And of course, in my courtroom, it's addiction. Every morning, every afternoon, all day, uh, in and out, and we have such a significant problem particularly in the courtroom I have because of the fact that it is primarily based with DUI and other addiction related. If there is a chance for someone in my courtroom to go to a program, program like RU, have people who love them, who can hold their hand and push them at the same time toward a better future, then I wholeheartedly endorse it. And it is indispensable because Think about, and I'm sure because it's your ministry, you, you already understand this, but uh, an individual who is given the opportunity to like themselves and to contribute to their community and to recognize that contributing to the community is really where it's at to make them a better person. Whenever we can have that and have it be successful, we have to do what we can to make sure that it works. I was at the Boone County Fair because since I am running, I'm kind of everywhere. And uh, a young woman that I put on probation, a heroin addict, um, probably about nine months ago, she'd had issues trying to get her child back because of her heroin usage. I put her in jail a few times because she wasn't following the court's orders. Um, and, she came with her son, she has custody of her son, and I had told her, look, you have to make choices, and who else loves your son more than you? Who else can take care of your son more than you? Who else wants to be the one who he looks up to and is an example for? You are that person, and she answered me every time. I said, well, then you need to make sure that you do what you need to do walk the steps, 
take care of yourself and what you need to do so that you can manage the monster, get past that. And it's going to be an everyday thing. You're going to have to say, today I'm not going to use. And tomorrow when you get up, you're going to say, I'm not going to use. And you're going to use the tools that you learn, and you will be successful. And you can be successful. And off she went, me praying that, that it works. So fast forward to uh, a couple weeks ago at the Boone County Fair. Here she is. She looked great. Her son was with her. She had custody. She said, Judge, can I give you a hug? I said, absolutely. <laughs> she has custody of her son. And she's like, Judge, I'm doing it. I am doing it, and I'm not going to go back. And so it wasn't uh, reformers, but it was a similar type of program up in Wisconsin that she uh, went through. Uh, and I have other similar stories from my courtroom, and I have people that have, have or are going through uh, Are You Now that I can tell when they come into the courtroom, they look better, they have a confidence about them, and they're doing it. They are succeeding and it's because of all of you and your ministry. So a privilege for me, congratulations to the graduates. Uh, I, as a judge, if I can do something to encourage you in your walk, in your faith, in sobriety, then I try to do that. And you know, kudos to you for doing the work because it is work, it is not an easy journey. I had a young man recently who had written a long letter and asked me to read it. And he referred to his addiction as the sly and cunning monster that had taken over him. He got it. He was finally understanding that that, chi that sly and cunning monster was something that he had to gain control over. Uh, so I think now that he's recognized that, I'm very hopeful that he can begin a jury. And I think uh, he's got a couple of things, I think, set up. I'm not sure where yet. Um, but So that's a whole lot, maybe more than you wanted to know. But... Um, this is such a crucial ministry, and I thank you all for doing it because you make a difference every day in the lives of these men and women as well as those you have not yet met and those you maybe never met because they've already come through it. So again, thank you very much. It's a wonderful privilege to be here, uh, and big congratulations to all the people who are graduating as well as getting close to graduate. Thank you. Yes. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Our gracious Lord, we are so thankful. When the Son of God makes us free, we are free indeed. So thankful to have partnerships. We're so thankful for you opening up doors. And Lord, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for all that you do. And I pray you bless this service. I know my graduates are nervous. So I pray that you calm their nerves, Lord, that you give them the words to say, Lord, that you use their testimonies. And Lord, I pray that you bless all that happens here on this campus today. And we love you. And we praise you. And it's in Christ's name. Well, I had no idea you were coming. And so the, uh, the Lord said, hey, uh, you don't get a chance to praise Al Page all that much. And so, uh, Brother Page, I wanted to personally thank you with Eric graduating. I was thinking about all of the different men and women that have came through either you, your wife, or really your, your team that you have there at the, uh, the local county jail. And I just wanted to personally thank you. And there was no better person to really uh, advertise than, you know, having a judge come here. Because my next thing was going to be this, is that he works on a shoestring budget. I mean, his budget is next to nothing. He supports men and women coming through the homes. He supports them in their graduate programs. And he, not really he, but, you know, the jail ministry could desperately use some funds. And so I'd ask that if you could give specifically to the jail fund, uh, I'd ask that you do that. The, the curriculum that they need, the resources that they need, the cost of tuition, and all of the other ideas. If he had money, if you sat down and just picked his brain for a minute, the advancements that he's wanting to make through the jail ministry, but he can't because of the lack of funds. And so, Brother Page, I want to personally thank you and your team. You guys are doing a great job, a great work. The Lord is using you in a mighty way. And if, if we could just take a moment and praise the Lord for how he's using uh, Brother Page, I sure would appreciate it. <laughs>